Hey, I'm Chris Roth, the professional prospector, and today we're here to talk about where to find gold in Northern California. Now, I'm doing a series about where to find gold in different places, including, you know, I've already done one on Montana, and we'll do some other states coming up. But California, it's produced so much gold, and it really needed to be divided in two. So Northern California includes the famous mother load country and all the gold deposits uh, associated with that. And we're gonna talk a bunch about it. And then it also includes the, uh, the Trinity Klamath region up in the Northwest part of California. And we're gonna take a closer look at that. I'm here at an old placer mine in California. And this mine uh, produced thousands of ounces of gold. This old hydraulic mine, man, there are hundreds of them like this in the foothills of the Sierra. And I've found lots of gold in places like this, and hey, you can too. So come along with me today and take a look at the geology and gold deposits of Northern California. So let's dive into where you can find gold in Northern California. Now, Northern California is famous for producing huge amounts of gold and a lot of big, juicy, beautiful, buttery, golden nuggets like this, as well as plenty of fine gold um, that just is in many of the streams and rivers. You know, the old timers started out panning and uh, digging by hand, and it wasn't long before they went to using things like rockers and sluice boxes, but uh, Within a few years after that, when the big gold rush was going, they figured out how to use the power of high pressure water to wash down the hillsides of gravel that were present. And literally millions and millions of ounces were produced, tens of millions of ounces were produced in Northern California. And they were produced both by that hydraulic mining that I just showed you and by bucket line a dredging and uh, uh, by underground mining in the mountains where they dug tunnels into the hills to mine rich gold veins that looked a lot like this. Um, this is one of the rich gold veins of Northern California. Now there are still people out there, prospectors out finding nice gold in California to this day. In fact, I'll be honest, uh, more than half of the gold that I've found over the years has been from places in Northern California. And it's a, a very popular place for people to come and find gold. And there's no reason why you shouldn't be out there getting your share of the gold as well. I mean, there's places to run a sluice box or, or pan to get out like I'm doing here and do some dry washing. A lot of people think of dry washing as a, a desert only kind of thing, but hey, when the gravels are dry and you're a long ways from any water, uh, dry washing is a good way to get some nice gold. It's great for family activity, panning, take your kids out and that sort of thing. Um, People are high banking, and uh, like I say, this is a you know power sluicing or high banking, um, even uh, using uh, decent sized trommels where you have to feed it with a with uh, hydraulic equipment. Now, unfortunately, it's been years since uh, California has allowed. It's been a decade since California has allowed dredging. I used to use uh, dredge in the summertime in California every year, but the the beautiful gold-bearing streams are still there. This is the, the North Fork of the Yuba River. And, you know, not only are the big rivers, the bigger streams like this gold-bearing, but even the little tiny streams like this, the little creeks that flow through the area, almost all of the area in the area, the regions that we're going to talk about in on the western slope of the Sierra and up in the Klamath Trinity area, Virtually every little stream has gold in it. And we're going to talk about some of the places that you can go and find gold. We're going to talk about the gold districts of California because there's a lot of them. Like I say, people are still out there digging. Um, you know, you have organized digs. 
the gravel that they're digging in here was is part of a an ancient tertiary channel in uh, the Sierra uh, there's these ancient channels and even in uh, the Klamath Trinity River there's old uh, benches of gravel that have never been dug before the the gravel here in front of these folks is material that was laid down long ago and was never mined by any old-time miner you can see the bedrock along the bottom of the gravel and of course you know there's a lot of gold on bedrock and that's why these folks were digging here now these old uh, hydraulic mines that i showed you they are great places to go find gold and i admit that i've found a lot of gold in mines like this i've had a lot of success going out uh, around various rock piles like this and sometimes tossing a few of the piles aside or uh, or moving a few rocks can can really yield excellent results and get you into some really good gold and and these diggings they spread for miles and miles and cover huge areas I mean you can go out this is just one of the workings you can go out there and spend days and days and day, weeks and and not cover it all there's just so much to uh, to explore and look and and you know some of them are hard to get to but some of them are actually pretty easy and pretty reasonably accessible and like I say the, there are streams that go for miles and miles and you can kind of see the gravel in the foreground where the the burned trees are but off in the distance you can see other light patches of gravel and, and this is the same kind of thing it's a an old riverbed that uh, for various reasons was buried and then covered over and new streams cut through and now you have these old perched beds of gravel that uh, modern day prospectors are getting a lot of gold out of and they don't have to be huge areas like this sometimes they're just little areas of perched gravel up above uh, an existing stream we, modern prospectors call these benches or bench gravels and they're spread through the mountains in various areas um, literally like I say the old-time miners in California recovered tens of millions of ounces of gold and and if you can't wrap your head around tens of millions we'll think of hundreds of tons because that's what you're talking about hundreds of tons of gold came out of these mountains that I'm going to be showing you here we're going to talk about a little bit more in a minute but they are still great places for modern day prospectors to get out and find some nice gold here's some gold that I found I didn't I didn't find this coin I bought the coin the coin is for scale but uh, the gold here is gold that I dry washed in in the Sierras and you know people are still getting out and finding like I say not just nuggets but nice fine gold too so let's dig right in and talk about the places in California that you can go and find gold now there are two main areas in the northern part of the state of California that have yielded huge amounts of gold and these are the Sierra Nevada gold fields that lie mostly along the west side of the Sierra Nevada range and then there's also the northern California gold fields that go through the Trinity and Klamath uh, River areas um, include Shasta and and this whole area up to the north part of the state now this northern California gold field it actually we'll see in a minute when you look at the geology it continues across the state border into Oregon and so southwest Oregon is the northern continuation of this area of rich gold mines so let's take a further look at these individual mine areas and where they are now you can see I've kind of drawn up the uh, a map of the state of California and every little yellow dot on here represents an old-time gold mine this map is drawn off a, a, basically a database that the federal government has the old Bureau of Mines or the USGS has a database of, of gold mines uh, that operated in the past 
And if you take those and uh, plot them on a map, because the, the database includes coordinates, um, you can see that there's quite a few of them. Now, the diamond shape, yellow square, yellow uh, dots, those represent hard rock mines. And the square shaped ones represent placer type mines. Now, I want to note, because this uh, in this side we're focusing on that uh, Northern California gold fields, the ones that's right up against the Oregon border. And you can see that there's quite a few of them. I mean, literally some of these areas are, uh, the, the squares, you can't really see this very well, but they're dozens of, of, of dots deep. There's a multiple, multiple mines that are so close together that the dots end up getting stacked on top of each other. And, and so this covers the uh, mountain ranges of uh, the Northern California area, mostly in uh, um, Siskiyou and Trinity and Humboldt counties, um, Shasta County, of course, all of these have been very productive of gold. And even along the coast, you can see that there's some square dots along the coast there. Well, um, those square dots represent beach areas where the beaches have placer gold in them. So an interesting area to, to go hunt for gold for sure. So let's look more at uh, the Western Sierra gold fields, the Sierra Nevada gold fields. And this is basically the Sierra Nevada gold fields plotted out the same way with uh, every dot representing an old productive gold mine. Oh, and I want to note that the red dots here are mines that were still operating in the late 1990s. That's when this map was actually made up. But here, as in with the other one, um, many areas, these yellow dots are three, five, ten, even more uh, mines deep because there's an areas and districts with um, many mines in them and uh, so one small area may have you know 50 dots in it um, and, and you can't really show that very well but it shows how um, this series of mines and this is the mother load country the famous mother load country of of california uh, that started the first really huge gold rush now, there were other gold rushes in, in in the united states before this of course but um, this one was huge. It was, it was of a scale that, uh, that no gold rush had ever had before because literally people were, hundreds of thousands of people were sucked from all over the United States out to the West Coast to seek their fortune. Now, why do you have, you know, clusters of mines like this, like this one here and the one we showed you in the slide before? Well, it's because the geology is right for it. There are faults and uh, other um, types of rocks that are uh, conductive to producing gold deposits. And this is a geologic map showing uh, granitic rocks. That I painted the serpentine green. And then there's chloride or greenstone and uh, chlorite schist and slates and, and, and related rocks there as well. And you can see that the lines, the black lines, uh, you know, these are, it, it's shown as gold belts or vein systems. And you can see that there are gold vein systems spread throughout this area. And uh, often where the map here shows one line, well, there's a series of lines. You know, it says vein systems or gold belts. It's not just one vein is marked by these lines but many times it's dozens of veins um, that will be more or less parallel and uh, they will go through an area. And they're all related to ancient faulting that happened in, in this region where uh, faults were broken in the rock and uh, later uh, gold bearing solutions were forced up through these fault zones and deposited rich deposits of gold. And then here's the, that, the previous map. This map is basically the northern part of the uh, Motherlobe Belt system in the Western Sierra. 
uh, covering Plumas, Sierra, Nevada, and Placer counties, as well as Butte and, and Yuba County. Um, these are, are counties with rich with gold. And then this is the southern part of the mother load system, um, basically showing uh, uh, the mother load gold belt and then what's called the west and east gold belts. Um, they're basically parallel systems that run on either side of the mother load itself. Now, I've covered, uh, colored some of the serpentine green in this, but because of the scale of this map, it was hard and because the um, the bodies of serpentine, a lot of them are narrow and long, and so they're they're not clearly plotted as well as on the previous map. But still, um, it's important to note that in the mother load country in the Western Sierra, many times, so certainly not all, but many times, some of the richest gold deposits are associated with systems that are close to or parallel with belts of serpentine rock. And that's an important thing for you to remember as a prospector. Now, I mentioned that there were a system, there was a system of ancient rivers that flowed through the western Sierra Nevada range and that they were rich in gold and that these areas, even the ones that were worked out in the past, still produce nice gold for prospectors today. And here is a map uh, showing where some of those ancient tertiary channels are thought to have flowed and uh, the lines which they flow on. And now, of course, it's important to remember that not all the gravel in, um, in the rivers shown on this map are, is still there. Basically, what's happened is modern streams have cut through there and eroded away the gravel. And so what you have is patches and spots. So you may have a quarter mile up river, but then it's eroded away. And then further on down the line, maybe there'll be another half a mile of river. And then it's eroded away on down the line. And then maybe you'll have exposed a few hundred yards of gravel. And so it, it basically in discontinuous lines as the modern streams have cut through these ancient river channels. But it's important to know where these were and these have produced huge amounts, tons, really tons of gold, and still produce um, good gold today to people with metal detectors and, and other equipment going up there and digging in some of these old workings. Now, um, I mentioned about the, the gold of the northern area. This is a geologic uh, map or geologic terrain map of the area up there. And you can see um, I will say that the the brick red and green together with the pink uh, areas on this map are the areas that are known for producing gold. And you can see the green gold bearing area extends north of the California Oregon state line into Oregon and uh, the same rocks that produced gold in California produced gold in Oregon. Uh, north of the border. Of course, uh, you know, political lines are uh, made for political reasons and the geology doesn't necessarily follow uh, political lines. And of course, the geology is much older than the United States. So anyway, um, you can see here the areas of the northern gold fields that were productive in the various counties. Now, we're going to take a look at some of the different districts of California that have produced large amounts of gold. Now this is the northern, we're going back to the uh, Sierra Nevada, Western Sierra uh, areas and you know every one of these black dots is a gold bearing district and you can see there's just dot after dot after dot after dot after dot and eventually when you get up to the farther to the north they kind of spread out and then above where this map is they pretty much have petered out what happens north of this map is at the north end and to the further to the north it, it all the gold bearing rocks are buried by younger volcanics and so you just don't see the gold because younger uh, basalts and other volcanic rocks have buried the gold bearing rocks and so they can't be seen 
they're they're down there underneath further down and there would be more gold down there but uh you know if there's 500 feet of barren rock on top of the gold bearing uh, areas you're you're not gonna be able to see or do anything with the uh, the gold bearing area that's 500 feet down so anyway um some of these uh uh, rocks some of these districts have been hugely productive again produced millions of ounces of gold um, some are more known like uh, in the kind of north center of this map there's a, a district called Laporte and all around Laporte there are a number of districts that uh, have to do with those ancient rivers that I just mentioned because there's a line of ancient rivers that flows down from Laporte uh, to the south but each of these districts has its own history and own special flavor of, uh, in, of, of geology and and potential to find gold and, and if you get the feeling that there are so many areas here that are gold bearing that it just covers over the whole range then you're starting to get the feel for how this works here is the southern part of the mother load country and you can see there's a whole belt of uh, gold bearing areas that continues in a kind of a southeast direction and you can see as you go far enough southeast they start to um, spread out and uh, disappear and again the same sort of thing the gold bearing area peters out but each of these districts are famously productive and some more, of course more famous and productive than others but uh, there's potential at every one of these to find gold for the the modern day prospector here is a map of the districts of the northern gold fields that up for the Oregon border and it shows a whole bunch of these uh, districts that have been productive in the past uh, a lot of them have been placer but there's a number that are uh, hard rock districts as well so let's talk about where can you go gold panning in northern california i've shown a lot of districts and you know a lot of those districts if you go up there and poke around or maybe ask permission or or that sort of thing you can get in there and and get access to some areas to find some gold but if you're just coming to visit um, where would you go to you know if you're just starting out that sort of thing where would you go to go gold panning because uh, to be honest a, a lot of those districts you know there's a lot of private property and there's existing areas with mining claims that uh, other people own and so where are there areas that without a mining claim you can go gold prospecting and panning in in northern california well my favorite uh, to be honest is the auburn state recreation area near auburn california it extends for miles along the american river uh, drainage system and it covers huge areas that were very productive in the past for gold and and hey i've i've found some nice gold there in fact my favorite area within the auburn state recreation area is uh, a campground called mineral bar and uh, you can take that uh, go out of sacramento west to colfax and there's a road that goes from colfax to iowa hill which iowa hill was another famous gold district and um, if you take that road from Colfax to Iowa Hill you'll drive down and cross the North Fork of the American River and there at the, the bridge crossing there's a campground and um, all along the river there people have found gold there's a, so just a, a beautiful area to visit another area is the Plumas Eureka State Park uh, it's a state park but they allow panning there's uh, the middle fork of the Feather River that's south of Quincy. Um, there's a wild and scenic recreation area through there, and you can go through there and pan. Um, the Butte Recreation Area northeast of Chico, Columbia State Historic Park near Sonora, um, Keysville Recreational Mining Area, uh, which is further south near Bakersfield, um, the Malakoff Diggings State Historic Park near Nevada City, 
Uh, Marshall Gold Discovery uh, State Historic Park near Placerville, Merced River, South Yuba River State Park, Wild and Scenic, um, Swayze Recreation Area near Redding, uh, Trinity uh, River Wild and Scenic Park, many uh, campgrounds that are along rivers that are gold bearing in these areas also allow panning. But uh, um, I don't want to leave off the idea of local prospecting clubs. There's a number of them, uh, various prospecting clubs, including not just local ones, uh, national ones like the GPAA or other larger scale ones have claims up there. And you can get access to some of these uh, claims that the clubs own by joining those clubs. So Northern California has been highly productive of some huge amounts of gold. This is a seven and a half ounce nugget that a friend of mine found a few years back. Another friend found this beautiful crystalline specimen of gold. Believe me, there's gold out there in Northern California for you to find. And if you want to learn more about the various districts of California, I highly recommend this book, Gold Districts of California. It was written in 1970 by a, a guy uh, uh, who was a geologist with the California Division of Mines and Geology. And although you can buy, you can still buy paper copies of this, and of course paper copies aren't free, but you can download a free copy of this book off the internet. Just Google Gold Districts of California Bulletin 193 and you'll find uh, a link to uh, where you can go uh, to download a copy of this. And it has all kinds of information. It's very detailed and even gives uh, references of, of other places that you can look to find even more information. But if you want to find out about the gold districts of California, because you want to go prospect there and find some gold for yourself, well, this is the book you want. And like I say, you can download it for free. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my, my uh, production today on the gold deposits, where to find gold in Northern California. Um, and stay tuned because it won't be long and I'll be getting out one where to find gold in Southern California too, because there's a lot of gold there. So California, of course, a very gold rich state and uh, lots of opportunities to find gold for prospectors, both in Northern and Southern California. Now, if you want to become a better prospector and be going out and finding more gold for yourself, because I got to tell you, I've been doing this for 40 years plus, and it's really exciting. I really enjoy getting out and finding my own gold. If you want to become a better prospector and learn about how to find gold for yourself, I've written a book about it. It's a big, thick book with gobs of information, and I think you'll like it. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that right now. Okay, so I wanted to tell you a little bit more about my book. Um, I wanted to be able to share the knowledge that I've gained about finding gold and, and how to be successful. And so I spent years literally writing this book, Fistful of Gold. It's more than 350 pages long, which is why I say it's an encyclopedia of everything you need to know about finding your own gold. Um, I've sold more than 8,000 copies and I've got a lot of really great feedback on it. It just is the most complete book on the market. It has information about finding gold that literally is not available in any other book that you're going to find for prospectors because I took technical stuff from geologists and other um, mineral scientists and I've translated that into language that the average guy can understand. You don't need a PhD to go out and find gold. But the information that scientists have learned over recent decades can can be of a lot of help to people. So it's in this book. Uh, if you're interested about finding gold, panning, sluicing, nugget detecting, uh, dry washing, the geology of gold deposits and how they form, it's all in here. And like I say, it's more than 350 pages long. So if you'll just go to the description underneath this video, um, you can take a look. I've got a link in there to take you to Amazon to the site where the book is sold. And I think you'll you'll really enjoy it. Take, take a look at all the people who've commented on this 
and have really liked the book. It has a, a very, very high rating for a book. And also, I have a, a website, my own free website that uh, you can take a look at. Um, I've got all kinds of information on here about uh, doing research and how to find gold, a lot of good information, stuff that basically uh, couldn't fit into my book. And so I put it on this website and I have a, a link also for that in the video description. So take a look in the description and you can click on the, uh, the link and it'll take you to my website. And finally, if you like this presentation, I've got a lot more coming out. Here's a three and a half ounces of gold that I found a couple years back in one area. Um, I've got a lot more of these videos coming on gold, gemstones, hard rock, placer, a lot of metal detecting. There'll be lots of metal detecting stuff. So if you really enjoyed this, click the subscribe button and then tick the notification bell off and YouTube will let you know when I publish new stuff. And hit the like button as well. And please comment on these videos because I'm interested in what you have to say. And I promise to answer any questions you have. So if you are wondering about anything or think maybe I didn't cover something thoroughly enough in a video, then let me know and I'll be happy to try and help you out and give you whatever information you need. So thanks a lot and I um, hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you again real soon.